Okay, hello. I wanted to talk a little bit today about um, the um, using color to tell a story. And we talked actually about this quite a bit in the last class, last lecture. Um, so today I just kind of want to touch on it again. And, you know, it's telling a story with color. I mean, your best bet is to look at paintings uh, and illustrations that you like. Um, many comic artists that draw the comics, they will use photo reference. Uh, sometimes as a colorist, I will ask them for that reference to see how they're lighting, you know, what the lighting looks on the photo. Um, but a lot of it has to do, when you're telling a story with color, the mood of the light, um, what you're trying to portray in the page. Um, if we look at like something like this page right here, it's a little grainy, uh, you know, they're, they're um, in this sort of dream area, um, this mindscape sort of where they're having this meeting, and, um, you know, it's, it, so the lighting is soft, uh, it's very calm, uh, it's, you know, they, they were trying to go for that, if it was you know, a chaotic mind or like a really heated meeting, you'd probably use um, stronger colors, uh, maybe reds and oranges. And, but here we've got nice cool colors, nice blues, uh, subtle greens, uh, giving it a very calm sort of feel. So we're getting these files over here. Ready to go here. Uh, I thought I had them in the folder. There we go. So you've got these, you know, really subtle tones. Now, if we contrast that with something like this, oops, I'm hitting the wrong thing. With something like this, oops, which we showed last week. I mean, this is a battle. I mean, you have got reds, like the background is red. You're talking a strong complementary color, the cyan. Um, it's it's action, it's heat. Things are happening here. Um, our eye is zipping through these panels because of the the just the, the color and the, the vibration of it. Um, in the same type of way, we've got this page here where it's using warm colors and warm tones to show a bit of an edge to it that this guy is he's a devil or whatnot and so you're using reds uh, to sort of move your eye along and you are you're moving your eye along quickly it's not the same as a battle but it's it's still eye catching and still moving the eye um, let's take a look if we take a look at something like this again it's using heat it's using um, this strong background color uh, a sense of urgency, a sense of motion, a sense of movement. Um, it isn't sort of like a, a you know, swinging sort of calmly. Actually, let's look for a, um, let's look for like a Spider-Man. That's actually not Spider-Man, but Venom. Uh, let's look for like a cover. Just do Spider-Man covers. At least my computer is a little slow. So let's look for something like a. No idea what my machine is doing. It's all winding up. I mean, let's take a even look at something like this. You know, it's still kind of warm, but you can see, you know, it's it's night, cooler colors, much lesser sense of urgency uh, to the um, to the day. I'm actually going to grab that for later. Uh, let's look at a few more. There's like literally been like 800 comic book covers. You think Google would pull up a few more for me here? You know, even like 
let's take a look at that. Look at how, you know, dark, cool, much different feeling, much different vibe to that. Or even let's look at this one. You know, here it's daytime. This cover would be much different if it had a really dramatic light source from the bottom. This was supposed to be fun, easy. It's a brand new day. It's daytime. It's a nice little cloudy day. Peter Parker is rushing off with his, with his putting his mask on as he goes to work. It's very carefree. Uh, a lot different than, you know, this cover right here. Let's look at a couple things as far as sort of finding the light. I mean, the first thing you want to do is you want to start with looking at a scene, determining, A, where the light sources are. I mean, that kind of stuff is a given. You want to know where the light's coming from. If you look at something like this, okay, you see the shadows the artist has put in here. So the shadows are in the front. There is a sun back there. There was probably line art over a sun. So we know light's shining this way. So we know this part in here is kind of in shade because here's a shadow here. So you know you're going to have a strong rim light here. But again, using these purples and these reds and these oranges, really, this guy's coming right out at you. Okay. And it makes sense for the cover. He's got this gun. His foot's right in front of your face. He's, he's not, it's not just like a leisurely swing out. Uh, he's after you. So it's choosing not only the right colors, but the right sort of style for it. Um, much differently, if we look at this one, we looked at this last week too, now we're in a winter scene where it's night. Very cool colors. Shadows are very blue. Uh, bluish, bluish purple uh, in cooler lighting situations. Um, even in you know your your you know mid tone to a little bit of warm, your shadows are kind of darkish blue, not black. But in your your cooler scenes like this, where you're really showing these light blues and and these cool tones, your shadows are you know they're not black, they're darkish blue, a little bit of purple in there. And here we can see it's very solemn, it's very quiet. But in the background, you've got this fire. I don't know what's going on back there, but it can't be too good. And of course, you're using color theory of warm and cool, uh, yellows and blues to sort of get a good value difference here, a good difference, sort of um, making these things pop off one another, which is very different from this page, okay, where you've got, you know, you've got, you know, you've got these cools, if I can find it again, these cool colors. You know, and now here's a very warm scene. Uh, and it makes sense because, you know, if, if the artist were to give you this and he were to say, you know, it's going to say in the text, it's a warm day, it's sunset, um, they're on a beach, which is obvious. Um, so light it accordingly. Now, let's say you're off top here, like, oh man, how do I do that? I mean, how do I, I'm not sure what that looks like. It's very simple. We have something amazing called Google now, right? So, um, the beach, sunset, images, and you can just go right through here. I mean, look at that. You see what, what's here and what's here, or how about this one right here? I mean, that almost looks like that sky and the water, and y you use that. You use that as a reference. You know, you look up people, and you use that. Let's say, um, beach, sunset, people, lighting. It's going to pull a lot of silhouettes out. But, you know, let's look uh, something like this. It's not as sunsetty, but we can see that it's, it's warmer lighting. It's kind of softer lighting. You know, look at this. And you could use that. As your reference, I mean, I do it all the time. Pull that reference and use it. How those people are being lit. Where does the shadow fall? 
okay? But again, you're, you're looking and seeing what is the most appropriate for that situation. Here's another thing where we got lighting styles. We, you might not, you can kind of, kind of tell. This is sort of like, you know, midday, maybe a little bit earlier in the day. The sun's coming up. It's going to be a hazy, maybe a hot one, uh, bright. Um, you know, everything has sort of got like a nice soft light to it, not very shadowy. It's not like sunsetty where it's really getting a strong light source. It's kind of a diffuse, maybe overcast day with a little bit of sunshine. Uh, and again, you can just Google that stuff. Um, I had a, some, uh, here's another one that's from like that same day. Okay. It's a diffuse kind of morning light, but it's still kind of contrasty on her. Maybe it's like a 11 ish, uh, and it's, and, and the lights sort of just nice and just falling on her. And these are the decisions you'll have to make when you're coloring something to tell a story. Do you need it to be slow and calm and cool? Do you need it to be um, in your face and kind of action-y? Um, and then also, you know, it has to do with when you're lighting like a full scene like this. Um, let's pull something up. One of my favorite colorists, Val Staples, he is incredible. He is an incredible colorist. And find some interior pages of his. You know, these are great. I mean, look at that. You know, again. Your artist tells you the per they're in silhouette. This is a fairly, not easy, but it's a fairly, because, I mean, that's hard to do. It looks easy, but it's hard. Um, but it's just a, a beautiful sort of warm-toned image. Let's see. You know, this is a cover. You know, blues and some reds and a little bit of yellow in there in the kicker. And it has that sensual kind of kind of bluesy, kind of um, calm, but a little bit of danger because this yellow and the, and, the, and the red and the dress. So you're going for motion. You're going to try and tell a story, and colors affect that. Um, colors create that. Find some more. It's always hard to just, like, sort of find pages when you're and Google, like, comic pages. Uh, I guess we could go to his DeviantArt page. I'm not sure what he's got on there. If he's got a lot or not. Some people use DeviantArt a lot. DeviantArt is a, a site for artists. Uh, you can post your work for free. I mean, here's something. Look at this. I mean, it's it's you know it's foggy. It's it's sort of mystical. You think something's going on here. You're using these sort of sickly greens and and dark purples and muted tones and. You know, the, the, these, this, this guy has got this sickly greenish yellow skin. So you're going, you know, this is telling you something. It's they're muted tones, so it's slowing us down. It's sort of building up for, like, what's going to happen. A lot of this is hard to sort of just, like, nail and pinpoint. It's, it's feel. It's, it's, it's sort of, you know, getting a handle on what color is and how color um, affects us. the you know red hulk running through the desert and again this makes sense you you could google this i bet this scene right here is someplace on google <laughs> google images and you've got this haze and you're using atmospheric perspective and now take a look at this if you see this you've got the background it's got a haze of the line art we'll look at that at some point and it's got that atmospheric perspective okay same thing here the line art's kind of colored in and look up atmospheric perspective um, and then the lizards all sort of pops in the foreground, but it's using these sort of warm, overcast tones to sort of to make us feel, you know, oh, we're in the desert. I realize that. But he is one of my absolute all-time favorite colorists. You know, let's see. 
here's something interesting. You know, we're at a funeral. Subdued background. You know, nothing really popping. Just sort of makes us calm down and look at the scene. a mature filter no one I was wondering why some of these pages aren't showing okay this is um, uh, a nice use of uh, monochrome color scheme I, I like that you know now take a look at this this is again we've got this this sort of greenish brown in the background kind of like something's wrong here and the violence of this the red color using it punching and then things, this, this, the calming effect happens here. And this is a great, interesting use of color in these panels. This calming effect, here's his hand. She is going to calm him down. And she grabs him, and the tone just changes in the page. So you can play with color that way, too. And, again, if you need, to, if you need reference in this stuff, this is what I'll do. I mean, I will just say um, morning uh, sun over city. I actually probably won't say it out loud when I'm doing it, but and then I'll look at I'll look at and that news uh, images, and then I I can see this here. This this sort of warm, you know, light uh, over a city. You know what it looks like, how it affects the buildings, and it could help. Oops, and it'll help me sort of paint my buildings. So there's tons of resources. Um, I'll even do this for people because sometimes for people we'll go over this in, in rendering. Um, dramatic lighting photography and now if we look here we can see this sort of dramatic lighting on people that's funny that's even got someone like uh, like Captain America shield and if you need help with your rendering like if we look at her okay and we're like mm, how do I like that how do I want to get that you know especially if you're not like familiar with if you're not doing a lot of painting how do I do this Okay, well here, look at this. This is almost the same kind of lighting. Well, it's not because it's shading in the forehead. But you could find something like that, how you wanted to light it, and use this as a reference. And, uh, you know, there's a bunch of photos right here. You know, what happens when you're lit from the front, the sides fall off? That type of thing. What does lighting from the profile mean? What happens? strong side lighting what happens over here and you color accordingly how do the muscles look in an arm I mean I use sites like this all the time and I'll share references with you uh, with that so watch the last tutorial or last lecture where we really got into color uh, theory part and this is sort of just like um, more like perspective atmospheric perspective things like that um, let's go to uh, You know, and you can look at here, and you can see a really good example. Mountains strong in the background, and they sort of lose their depth. They lose their focus. Hazy in the back, a little bit lighter. You know, sharper focus, cooler colors in the background. Even in the city, the haze in the background. And we'll look at, I'll show you how to make that line art look like that too. But you can, you can lighten those buildings up back there. And put that sort of haze over them. Don't render them so sharply. And we'll get into that in the next lecture. 
So look up atmospheric perspective, look up, um, uh, and look in Google, and look for images. Because I am in there constantly pulling images up. I mean, look at this. Dramatic lighting through a window. What does it look like? What does it do to things? It makes it a lot easier when you're trying to color and you're trying to put something together to be actually be able to look at how someone's doing it. So take a look at the last one. Watch through this again if you need to. Uh, email me with any questions and look for the rendering video pretty soon. This is where it starts getting fun. Choosing your colors and rendering. Up next.